I think we all recognise that the country uh, faces some profound challenges, both you know, social, economic, uh, and environmental. And our view is that as we sort of seek a way forward, that our sense of our sense of society, our sense of being it together, our sense of responsibility uh, to others is going to become uh, even more important. Uh, and we welcome that. In fact, we want to proactively encourage that. Uh, that partly reflects our view that the country has become too dependent on a, a large state that fails into a, in too many places. But it also reflects our belief that it's important for our national sense of well-being. Uh, and we attach a lot of importance uh, to that. And so we attach a lot of importance to thinking about what we can do to support local, voluntary, uh, community uh, action. And we think a lot about how we can get more resources into this wonderfully diverse ecosystem uh, of uh, uh, social action that we call, uh, with great inspiration, the third sector. Uh, it's important to us, uh, and it's much more than just uh, words. Uh, across the country, conservative candidates are developing and have been developing for years social action projects uh, in their constituencies. And when I took through Parliament a private members bill called the Sustainable Communities Act, which is all about trying to uh, encourage citizens to step forward and enjoy the opportunity to have more influence about the decisions that shape their community, David Cameron uh, and my party were enormously supportive of that, because we want to try and cultivate that. There are a greater sense of responsibility, duty, yes, but also a sense of possibility. That it's worth your time stepping up and volunteering your time, because you've got a chance actually to make a difference, change something, uh, influence something that you, that you care about. Uh, and we want this, because uh, it will improve people's lives, which is what I imagine all of us go into politics for. Uh, but not just the people on the receiving end of the time, the volunteering, or the charity. Uh, it also, in our experience, and you must know this from the work that you do, totally enriches the lives of the people who give the time. Uh, I think we all know that, uh, but somehow we don't communicate enough of that. I know that. My partner's just uh, volunteered uh, as part of her training to teach, uh, to teach English at a primary school. She absolutely glows when she talks about it. Uh, I recently delivered, uh, developed a social action project in my constituency. I pulled together about 60 people to, 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 to clean up the banks of the river and replant it with spring bulbs. You know, arguably not the most important thing in the world, but my God, 60 people came together and you could tell they really, really enjoyed a very rare opportunity to give time, to work together, to do some things together uh, for the public good. There was a really tremendous atmosphere about it, and we want we want much more about uh, much more of that. Uh, the question always is is how. Uh, I will give credit to the government where credit is due. I think that their intentions have been extremely good in this area. Personally, I don't think they've gone the right way about it. For example, you know how many people in this room, if they had 150 million pounds of public money to stimulate volunteering, would have spent it all on V and the experience call? Not many. Fact uh, I think there's been I think there's been too much focus on initiative itis uh, and the desire to create initiatives to show that something's being done without thinking about the sustainability uh, and long-term impact of those projects. Um, our, our approach will be driven by three in this area. Will be driven by three instincts. The first is we've got to do much more to create an environment where more seems possible for people. You know, we live in an age where time, time is people's most precious commodity. It's got to be worth people's time stepping up and getting involved. There's got to be a greater sense of possibilities out there, which is why, uh, in part, we, we place such emphasis on, you know, Michael Goh's ideas to encourage new people, charities, families, parents, to open schools, our, our community right to buy, to give communities the opportunity to, to seize assets and buildings that are in the public realm, which are you know, sitting there doing nothing. We've all got them in our constituents. There they are. Um, but, uh, or whether it's a case for getting people together to argue for a reallocation of money, public money. Uh, we can't do that now because we don't have the information. Conservatives committed to giving <coughs> communities and people much greater information on how the state is spending money. 
and the right to argue and get together to argue for it to be spent uh, better. Uh, you know, there's a lot to be done in terms of creating uh, an environment where people feel that more seems possible to them. The second area for it is to show much stronger leadership. You can't expect people to follow if you don't set a strong lead. That's why in, in relation to government we've already said we will give government employees the right to volunteer for at least uh, eight hours a year. It's, it's, it's a start. It's a start. It's an important start because if, if our instinct is right, what we've learned from the private sector is where progressive companies give this right, give this time, it's absolutely in the interests of that organisation uh, in terms of developing the skills of that organisation. They get so much more uh, out, 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 out of people. So a lead from government in terms of volunteering time is, I think, important. I mentioned business. I think they've got it. I think what goes on in the workplace is hugely important. One of the things I get most optimistic about is when I go and talk to companies like KPMG uh, and, and Barclays and hear what they're doing to encourage their employees to give time into the communities they, they serve. The social action project I talk about in my community was made possible by Barclays. What I liked about it was they said, we could give you the money, Nick, but actually we don't do that. We only give money where our employees feel strongly enough about the project that they will give the time as well. So we had six people from Barclays, they made, they made all the difference there. There's, there's a huge amount more that business can do, but government needs to take a lead in, in throwing a light on good practice and encouraging, asking questions of the rest of the business community, what are you doing? Um, uh, there's a huge amount more that local government do. I salute the government for their national indicators in terms of promoting volunteering. I've seen in Hillingdon where that is a very positive driver of, of behaviour and getting our local CVS to work together with the council. Uh, I welcome that, and there's, but there's much more that can be done to promote and spread best practice in terms of how government and the voluntary sector can work together to structure uh, volunteering opportunities that really work for people. And I think we want to encourage a stronger lead from young people as well, because they're the future. It's their habits, the cultural attitudes that they, they develop will shape how successful we are in the future. Uh, and that's why we attach a lot of importance to piloting this thing called a national citizen service. Uh, which is, will be in part, a large part, about connecting youngsters, young adults, with the opportunity to contribute uh, to their uh, communities. So creating an environment where more seems possible, much stronger leadership. And the last, uh, uh, last focus for us will be in trying to remove the barriers. What we perceive is that over time we've allowed to accumulate a really dense thicket of kind of regulation and costs and reporting and monitoring that actually gets in the way, stops people step forward, stepping forward, to give their time. Health and safety, CRB, you, you, you know what they are, you're, 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 in, you're in the field. Our instinct is that we've got to very painstakingly now start a process of clearing that thicket of regulation and bureaucracy that gets in the way. It's a very complex challenge because a lot of it is there for a reason that seemed sensible uh, at the time. So we're going to need some help, not least from you, in identifying what is frustrating, what is getting in the way, and working quite method in a very methodical way to try and clear that thicket, remove some of the barriers, uh, and remove the reasons for to say, to say no. So I hope I've given you a flavour of the three main focuses uh, of our effort. I think if we can succeed in any of that, we will play a part in unlocking the potential that exists out there in terms of energising uh, citizens to help uh, improve uh, people's lives. And, and yes, why not? Uh, I sense the country is, at the moment, uh, very divided and rather grumbling. I think through this agenda of energising people and uh, connecting with the opportunity to help improve other people's lives, we can create in this country a greater sense of unity and, yes, why not, happiness. Thank you. <laughs>